Brain rule number seven, sleep. Sleep well, think well. Here's another scandal and a bit of a surprise. After all these centuries of sleeping every night, we still don't know why we do it. It's not to save up all the energy you lost during the day. Both body and brain remain very active at night, as anybody who has ever had a dream can tell you. So why do we spend one third of our lives sleeping? We think it's because the brain needs the time to process the information we have taken in during the day. Yep, while you're asleep, your brain is busy at work in printing the memories you encountered that day. Studies show that when your sleep is interrupted or you don't get enough of it, the information you've taken in suffers. The science of sleep is vast, but we're going to deal with one familiar problem, the 3 p.m. meeting or the dreaded nap zone. Just so you're clear, everything is riding on this meeting. And I mean everything. We need this sale. Don't blow it. Ah, the Dander 500. The question that must be on all of your minds is... <coughs> the question... <coughs> the question that's probably on all of your <sighs> minds... <coughs> on all of your mind. <coughs> on all of your mind. <coughs> is... How can the dander 500 be good in my life? Or? My customers. Welcome to the nap zone, a time in the afternoon when the brain, like a baby, wants to take a nap. As you saw, it does not make sense to schedule an important meeting or teach a class in the mid-afternoon, 3 p.m. in this example, though that's not a hard and fast time slot. You would make better use of the time if you did something requiring less focus, like checking email. Most of us grab a cup of coffee and attempt to plow right through it. The problem is, you can't plow right through it. The brain appears to be trying to downcycle during the afternoon nap zone, and intellectual processing gets hobbled. It might sound far-fetched, but you should actually consider taking a nap at 3 p.m. One NASA study showed that a 26-minute nap improved a pilot's performance by more than 34%. A 45-minute nap made the boost last more than six hours, said Mark Rosekind, the NASA scientist who conducted the research. What other management strategy will improve people's performance 34% in 26 minutes? Another area in the science of sleep involves night owls and morning folks. We all knew this kid, and this kid, and we know them today. Good morning, everybody. Have you smelled the air this morning? It is amazing. It's got that crisp, clear, it's a brand new day smell to it. Like absolutely anything is possible. You just want to say, thank you, God, for making such a brand new day. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to climb to the top of a tall mountain. You know what I'm going to do when I get there? I'm going to shout. You know what I'm going to shout? I'm going to shout, bring it on. I'm ready. <laughs> Estimates vary but between 10 to 20% of us are morning persons, or what we like to call early chronotypes. And about 10 to 20% of us are night persons, or late chronotypes, and the rest of us are somewhere in the middle. If you fall into the late chronotype category, you were probably labeled lazy or unmotivated as a kid. And the scandal is this, that's unfair. The tendency may actually be embedded in your DNA. Possibly because in our early quest to survive, some of us had to stay awake at night to protect the others. It's probably in our family genes. 
Though you can take a test for this stuff, we instead label and blame. Out of necessity, we try to trick ourselves. But if we really wanted a productive solution for life and business, we would let morning people work at their optimum time and let night persons work when they are at their best. A novel thought, but maybe people would be happier and more productive. <laughs>